Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in a previous video, I discussed Blender's pie menu options. And in that I used a thumbnail that looks like a pie illustration. And I thought in this video, I'd show you how I created that. The actual modeling was done following a tutorial by Ryan King, and I'll link that in the description below as well. But he had more of a realistic look by the end of the video. So I used the modeling process and then shaded it myself to get the illustration look. In this video, I thought I'd show you how I did that using the shaders in Blender as well as the line art modifier in Blender Grease Pencil to get that look. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here we are in Blender and I've got my pie model up. And again, this was modeled based on a tutorial by Ryan King and I'll post that in the description below. If you look to the right, you can see this model is made up of four sections. That's the crust, which is around the outer edge. If I turn that off and on, you can see that. Then the filling, which is underneath the overlapping top. The pie pan, which is around the outside. And the strips, which are on top. And there's what the filling looks like. So the first thing I did was to add cartoon shaders to these. And I'll show you how those are made up. They're the same for all four parts. The only difference is the colors I used. So here I've got the shader editor up and you can see this is only made up of six nodes. And this is for the crust. So the first node is the texture coordinate node. And the texture coordinate node provides coordinates that affect how textures are displayed on the object. And my output is generated. The generated output means that texture coordinates are automatically generated based on the vertex positions of the mesh. Now I've got that connected to the vector part of a mapping node. And the mapping node allows you to control the texture and how it's mapped on the object based on location, rotation, and scale information. And you can see I've actually got those changed a little bit in here, and I'll show you a little bit about that later. So this is hooked into the principled BSDF node, and this is your base shader node. Even though I'm really not using any information in this, I need it there, and then I output that to the shader to RGB, which gives you the cartoon look. Now the color from the shader to RGB goes into the color ramp, which is actually the colors I'm using for the model. So I'm going to turn off filling, pie pan, and strips. And we'll turn on the viewport shading. Now you can see how that looks around that. So the color ramp is controlling all the colors. When you first link up a color ramp, it will be typically in linear. And you can see that creates more of a gradient look. So if I go back to constant, you can see now I have this cartoon look. You can see where it's like a hard edge around those colors. So if I grab this and drag it, you can see how the colors change based on that. And then the color ramp goes to the material output. So this is the same shade I used on all of these. So I'm going to turn these back on so you can see what those look like. Now it looks a little jumbled right now, and that's because we haven't added the line art yet. So to do that, you have to add a grease pencil object to the scene. Shift A, choose grease pencil and blank. You need that even though I'm not going to draw anything on the object. I want to use it to serve as the basis for putting line art on it. So to do that, if I click on pie and smoke, which is my grease pencil object, and I go down to the modifiers, you can see I have a line art modifier installed. So even though I haven't drawn anything in Grease Pencil, I'm using a Grease Pencil object to apply lines to this object. So you can see I have my four parts of the object in the model container up here, the collections. So when I first install this line art modifier, and I'll show you by adding another one, I'll add line art. So you see I've got a second one down here. So when you get it, all these are blank. So you need to be a little bit organized when you do this. I'm going to click on this and you can see I can choose model, which is what my collection up here is named. And that's what I've got in this spot. And then strokes is choosing the strokes from your grease pencil materials. So you can see I've got pie strokes, which is what I used on my modifier right here. And then the last one is the material. So if I go to my materials tab down here, you can see I've got black, which is a stroke and no fill. And that's what I'm using to create the strokes. So if I go back to my modifier and delete this one. So that's what I'm using to add lines of this 3D model. So you can see up here, down here, you also have line thickness. So let me go ahead and turn this grease pencil object on so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see how the line art looks with it applied. 
And all that was done using the line art modifier. So you can see under that where I've got collection as model, layer as pie strokes, material as black. You need those three things to do this. I can adjust the line thickness here. So if I increase that, you can see it increases on the model. So that's how you control that. So I'm going to go back to six. You can also change the opacity of that line. So you can see that's decreasing or increasing. You can also control that in the materials if you want to. But this controls the overall line work. You could, if you had multiple lines on your object, you could control that on a line basis in the materials, but this controls the overall opacity of the effect. So if you want to get granular, you could do it on a material basis rather than here. So the other thing you need to know is under edge types, this is where I chose how the lines would be displayed or created. So if I uncheck these, you can see I don't have any lines. So the first one I want to check is contour. And this setting adds strokes to curved areas. So you can see how if I turn that on and off, it's mainly around these curved areas that it's showing. The next one is Crease Threshold. You can see that applies the bulk of the lines, and that's because my threshold is set to 170%. So if you want to get a certain look and you're not getting it, you may want to change that value a little bit, but this was the default, so I left it there. The other one was Intersections. So if you look here where the layered crust is intersecting the crust around the edges, I don't have any lines, like right here. But when I turn intersections on, that creates lines where the 3D models are intersecting each other. So the last one I want to discuss is edge marks. And what this means is that you can designate edges that then will have a line added to them. So to demonstrate that, I want to go to the modeling tab and I want to turn this off. I want to turn off the grease pencil object. I'm going to go to object mode, hit shift A, and I want to bring in an icosphere. I'm going to go to edit mode, and I'm in edge mode. I'm going to select all of these edges. I'm going to right click, and down here you can see mark freestyle edge. So I've got that marked. Now I'm going to add another grease pencil object. So I'm going to go back to object mode, shift A, grease pencil, blank. And I'm going to add a line art modifier. And I'm going to create a new collection. And I'm going to drag the icosphere into it. So under this collection, I'm going to select collection three. I'm going to select the GP layer, which is the grease pencil object I just created. And under material, I'm going to click black 01. Now, if I go to the edge types and turn everything off but edge marks, you can see those edges I marked are the only thing that are getting a grease pencil stroke. So that's how the edge marks works. So if I turn edge marks off and on, you can see I only did that to create this one little line around the edge here because I want to give a little more definition. So if we're into this now, you can see what that would look like. And then for the background, all I did was add a back plate. You can see that is just a plane with a orange kind of peachy color to it. Then I added a floor and I thought those two colors contrasted nicely. And I added a light just to add a little bit of definition to the pie and to create a shadow. So if I turn that on, so you can see I got the pie off the ground because I wanted that shadow at the bottom. Kind of create this rounded look underneath it. So the last thing I want to show you before I exported this to InDesign to add some additional design elements and the text, I did create some smoke around that. And the way I did that was if I go to my grease pencil object, you can see that I have three layers, smoke, mask, and pie. And the pie is the lines on the pie. And then smoke. I drew this wisp of smoke here and it surrounds the pie. And I wanted to cut the pie out of the smoke because it was causing the colors to look too white. So what I did was create a mask by drawing a circle around the pie and then cutting that out of the smoke. So if I turn that back on, you can see how that works. And if I scroll in, you can see there's a little lip over here that kind of gives that smoke an outline of the pie pan. 
So to do that, I just clicked on the smoke after I drew both layers and under smoke, I clicked on masks and then I chose the smoke mask that I created. So that's how I added the smoke. So last thing I wanna show you before I close this out is some adjustments you can use on these shaders. So I'm gonna turn everything off but the crust. And then I'm gonna select the strips. So if you wanna adjust the look of this, you can add a light to kind of break this up. So if I turn my light on and off, you can see how that adds a little bit of additional texture to this. But the only settings you need to play with here are the mapping settings and the color ramp settings. So if you watch the crust up here, if I change that, you can see how it adds or subtracts some of these colors or changes the amount that are being applied. So that's one way to adjust your settings. And the other is the location information. So as I change X, you can see how that grows. Same for Y and then Z. And then if I rotate, I get the same effect. It'll start changing where those colors are on the model. Same for scale. So those are the two nodes you only really have to adjust to get the look you're going for. And you can even change the colors here. So again, the shader is very simple to make and it's also very easy to manipulate. So that's how I was able to create this look without too much effort. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching and hope you enjoy this content. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.